Hey there, pioneers. Welcome to the Reflections Cast, designed to immerse you in teachings about goal setting, dream building, and all things dynamic living. Join us for inspiring conversations as we unwrap these topics and offer insights for seeking positive change in your life. Here's season two, episode eight, Inside the Dream. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reflections Cast. My name is Steve. And I'm Melody. And we are super excited to have you here for another week of Lessons from Skip. We are moving on to number eight in our series about effective guidelines for goal setting. And in this one, it is all about developing goals inside the dream. And I'm not going to go into details. I'll let Skip do that. But it's an awesome lesson. I can't wait to get into it with you all. But before we do. (laughs) <laughs> As always, I just want to give a brief reminder uh, that we love your feedback. We love hearing from you guys. So if you would be so kind as to give us a like or a comment or send us an email or a voicemail, we just love to hear from you. And it also helps the algorithm know that people are listening and people are liking what our podcast is about and recommend it to others out there as well. So If you feel inclined, please send us some feedback. And before we get to Skip, I always like to check in with Melody as well. Melody, how are things going? How is Pioneer Circle and all things Circle A? We are doing great. We are really getting excited for an awesome spring and summer as we continue to do the work of this next generation of Circle A. So we've got the Pioneer Circle going, which is our coaching platform um, that really is working to resource um, young people for the changing of an age. And so we are loving our monthly coaching calls, our daily uh, text encouragements or weekly videos and just the community that we're building um, in the Pioneer Circle. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can go to pioneercircle.org. We'd love to have you be a part of the circle. And then we also have our Circle A Summit, which is coming up this summer in Michigan. And I wanted to take just a couple minutes to update you guys a little bit on the Circle A Summit. We are so excited. Last year, our family camp format was really so amazing and fun as we had families join together. Some families were um, former Circle A campers who had come back to bring their kids. Some families were new friends um, who were experiencing Circle A for the first time. Some families uh, didn't bring kids and just had some adults come and be a part of the adult program. And so it was a um, a mix of all different sorts of people. And so we are doing that again this summer. And I wanted to, um, address that a little bit because we got an email this last week from someone who, uh, their previous, um, I think it was their son had attended Circle A um, as a camper several years ago when we were running it strictly as a youth camp. And so they wanted their next child to be able to come to camp. And they were asking, um, you know, why why the family camp format? It, why is it required that a guardian come along to be a part of the program? So I wanted to just speak to that because I think that's a question that a lot of people have. And I'm excited about the answer um, because the answer is really twofold. Um, the first reason is that we are sort of building back up to a youth program because we had to take several years off um, for dad's health and for lockdown and for all sorts of things going on in the world. Um, we were not able to kind of raise up a crop of young leaders to take over as our LTs in a certain time frame where it was needed um, for us to be able to run a summer camp program. And in addition to that, we are looking at ways to make the youth pro- program most effective for the youth of today, um, because the youth of today are facing different things um, than the youth of 40 years ago. And so we want to make this program the most effective that it can be, the best experience that these kids can have. Um, and the way that we have found to do that in this moment is the family camp format because we are loving the experience of families coming together where parents and caregivers can be resourced with language and with experiences, uh, shared experiences and individual experiences um, and community so that they can kind of take the lessons of Circle A back home with them it, to their whole family um, so that everyone can be on a path of growth and flourishing together. So we're loving the family camp format and we are looking to expand the youth 
camp format, which we are actually going to be doing this summer. So if you've checked out our website, which is circleacamp.com, you'll see that we are offering two different programs. So there is an adult program and there is a youth program. So even though people are coming together as families and there are going to be activities that you're going to do as a family, there's also going to be a big portion of the program that is separated out so that our youth can kind of build their own community. Our adults can build their own community. And I think it's going to be an exceptional experience for everyone. So I'm so excited. Last year was amazing. And I think this year is going to be even better. And I think next year will be even better than that as we raise up this crop of new leaders. Um, so thank you for writing in with these types of questions. We're very excited to see new registrations coming in for the summit. So if you are interested in coming, I would recommend going ahead and getting your registration finalized soon um, so that we can make sure that we fit everyone who wants to be a part of our Circle A Summit. Thank you, Melody. I can absolutely attest that kids love it. My kids loved it. I don't know if I'm a impartial judge on the matter, but I can definitely say that when we got back, my kids said that they would rather go to Circle A again than any other trip that uh, we could do, whether it was Disney or anything else. So uh, just know it's worth it, guys. If you can get there, if you can be there with your kids, it it's life changing. It is awesome. And, you know, observing how camp worked uh, when it was just the kids at camp was they do. They go through these incredible life changes, incredible experiences, and they want to share it with their family when they come home. And And I remember dad always kind of warning the parents like, hey, they're going to want to tell you a bunch mm-hmm. of crazy things that they did here. And they're going to have like a bunch of weird things that they say. And he would encourage them to just listen yep. <laughs> and try and try and incorporate it into what's going on at home and look through their notes with them and, and try and understand what it is that they experience there. And I always thought that's not enough right. <laughs> for these parents to really understand what's going on, uh, to really equip the parents to engage in that atmosphere with their kids when they get back home, uh, to help them be excited about accomplishing goals and excited about having a positive attitude about things. And so having the whole family there or having a, a, a guardian there that can facilitate it once they get back home is just life changing and awesome and exciting. I, I, I love that we're, we're trying new things with circle a and, um, I think it's, it's making an impact. So if you can guys, definitely come to circle a this year it's going to be a blast all right well with that this next lesson is if you have any experience with circle a (laughs) you will recognize this lesson uh, very well it is a a near and dear story uh, within the circle a canon (laughs) the circle a dialogue Um, and we won't we won't necessarily have a lot of notes after it but we definitely will have a great discussion. So here's the time with Skip entitled Inside the Dream. Number eight, the eighth guideline. Goals must be set and seen from inside the dream. From inside the dream. Good friend by the name of Morris Goodman. Morris Goodman uh, was a million-dollar roundtable insurance salesman executive. And he had his own plane, and he flew all over. um, And one day he was flying that plane and came in to an airport that he was not familiar with. He came in too low, and the wheels of his his, uh, single-engine plane caught some high-tension wires. At the, for the end of the of the uh, runway, and flipped him upside down and crashed into the ground. The plane exploded in fire, and um, the emergency vehicles got there very quickly. They pulled him out. Later on, he he would he would tell people uh, around him that when they pulled him from the plane, he heard the medical people the emergency treatment people talking about him and saying he'd have been better off if he had just died. If he ever survived, it will be an awful existence. And he he said, later on, he said to those people, I 
I, I just wanted to say, treat me as though I'm alive, not as though I'm dead. He was taken into the hospital and the doctors examined him, x-rays. His neck was broken in, in three places. The nerve from, from his brain to his diaphragm was severed so that he had no control of his breathing. His throat was crushed. He could not swallow. The doctors told his family he would not survive in all likelihood. If he did, he would be a vegetable the rest of his life. And he asked the question, should I operate? And um, without going into all the details of the story, uh, they did operate. They did splice together his neck. Uh, they did put him on a breathing machine. Um, Morris Goodman today travels the world. He uh, goes on hunting safaris in um, Africa, in the jungles of Africa. He flies all over. He speaks publicly all over. Been a good friend for a, a number of years. We've had him here as a guest at Circle A on um, more than one occasion. And he, he told me, he said, Skip, when I was in the hospital, and the doctor said I would never walk again. He said, my dream, first of all, was to get off that breathing machine. He said, I knew if I couldn't get off the breathing machine, I'd never be free. So he said, when they would leave my room at night, he would say, I would see in my mind's eye, my chest rise and fall, expand and fall, expand and fall. And he said, I kept working to get the muffles to, to cause my chest to rise, to pull in a little bit of air and then to fall and force it out. So in that way, I could begin to learn to breathe. And one night he said to the head nurse, take the breathing machine off. She said, I can't do that. You'll die. He said, take the breathing machine off. So she went to one of the other nurses and she said, this, this Goodman down here, thinks he can breathe without the machine. You and I know he can. And the other nurse said, you know that, I know that. Every doctor in the hospital knows he cannot breathe without the breathing machine. But until Morris believes it, take it off. And that night for 60 seconds, he breathed without the machine. And within a matter of a few weeks, he was breathing without it altogether. Then he learned how to swallow and how to eat and how to talk. He's not, he's not, I mean, he has a run and pole vault and do hurdles, but he gets around. He said, when I was laying in the hospital bed and I used to visualize walking out of that hospital, he said, I promised that doctor that I would walk back in in six months and shake his hand. And he said, I visualized it. He said, when I was laying on my bed, what I visualized are my feet swinging off the edge of the bed and standing on the ground. And then I watched as this foot, foot one and four. He said, I didn't stand over there and look at me. He said, I saw my feet touch the floor and then take a step and a step. And a step. He said, I was inside the dream. That's where the goal has to be seen inside. What's it going to feel like? What does it feel like for the goal to be accomplished? You see, before Circle A ever existed, I had been here. Before this building ever existed, it existed here. I had been here. So that we've got to get inside the dream. See it from inside the dream. What does it feel like? And while you're inside the dream, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Here's another important question to ask yourself. Will you accept the results? See, what are the results? Okay, as Morris was inside that dream and he saw the result as being able to walk out of the hospital, he didn't see the result 
probably all of the result, but he was, he was willing to accept the result of walking on his own rather than being wheeled around and cared for for the rest of his life. See, there are some who would have said, wheeled around, cared for, taken care of, everything done for me the rest of my life. That's not all bad. See, when the disability goes, it goes when health arrives. Are you ready to be without the disability? Are you ready to be without whatever this dream fulfilled is going to get rid of? Are you ready to be with whatever this dream fulfilled is going to bring into your life? It will bring success in some measure. Are you ready to live with that? Are you ready to accept that? Can you handle that? All of these questions come as a result of seeing it from inside the dream. All right. So that was our time with Skip. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If it didn't sound like something you recognized or you weren't quite familiar with the story he was talking about. This is a story of a man named Morris Goodman, who we always called the Miracle Man at Circle A. And anytime it would rain, anytime we had to bring in the kids from the athletic field or the canoe trip or whatever, whatever there was an excuse that we had to bring them inside. His story was one of the few movies that dad allowed to be shown at camp. And so anyway, he brings up this story of Morris Goodman to illustrate his point, which is that goals must be set and seen from inside the dream that you must be so plugged in that you can actually visualize what these goals need to be to accomplish that dream. So in the, in the case of Morris Goodman, when he's in his hospital bed being told by doctors and nurses, you know, he'll never walk again. He'll never function again. Uh, it'd be better off if we didn't get him out of the wreck in the first place. He blocked that out because he had his dream and he made goals while locked into that viewpoint, that vision of the life he was going to go for, not the life everyone was telling him he was going to experience. And he said that he was inside, inside himself. And that's where he was able to process these goals that he wanted, whether it was relearning how to breathe or relearning how to speak or relearning how to walk. All of that was things he was told it was never going to happen. Skip asked a lot of questions at the end of that illustration that I would just wanted to go over because I think they're great questions. So the questions he asks revolve around coming up with the goal inside the dream, which is what is it going to feel like? Can you visualize it? Can you really experience that dream inside of your mind? What does it feel like when that goal is accomplished? What are the results going to be? Whether they're good or they're bad or they're new uncomfortable responsibilities or changes in the way that you've lived your life that you don't know what the next outcome is going to be. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be with whatever this dream fulfilled is going to bring into your life? It will bring success in some measure. And are you ready to live with that? Are you ready to accept that? Can you handle that? All of these questions that dad asks come as a result of seeing it from inside the dream. And you can only really answer those questions if you have that perspective from inside the dream. And I just, I love this lesson. I love this discussion and I love the story of Morris Goodman. It's, it's always fun to hear. And I, I guess it's, it, you know, it's an inspiring story. Don't get me wrong, but it's very nostalgic for mm -hmm. me because it just reminds me of my childhood yep. <laughs> and rainy days at Circle A. But it is a very inspiring story. We always sold the book at the Trading Post, The Miracle Man, and I'll make sure we've got a link for it that we will put in the uh, YouTube description so you guys can check that out as well because that helps with the podcast. But it really is a great book and a great read. And he barely touches on his story uh, in this lesson. So, uh, there is so much more to, um, be inspired and discover about the miracle man. Uh, if you were a camper and you love the version that we, uh, always played at circle a, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that the version we had, uh, you know, I want to say it was recorded off of like 
the television. Do you think that's right, Melody? Was it was it was it a TV special? It's only a half hour long. I mean, I have a vivid memory of the like the VHS case that it was in. So yeah, you're it right. wasn't recorded off the TV that whatever we showed. It was it was packaged and sold, but it may be the same version that they did for TV. But I, I definitely right. re- can see the blue <laughs> case, VHS case in right. my mind. So <laughs> Yep. Yep, you're right. Well, we we did find that uh, version on YouTube. So that'll also be in the YouTube description if you want to have a little nostalgic uh, run down memory lane. Uh, But they did remake the movie as well with like a big, big budget in 2013 as well. So if you don't want the made for TV 30 minute special, uh, there's like a proper hour and a half long version as well that you can check out as well as the book. But it was it was always awesome to hear Morris Goodman's story, but getting to meet him occasionally was really an incredible time as well, because he really is the man that you think he is. You know, he really pushed himself through this incredible feat. And when you meet him, you understand how he did it because he is a he's quite a character. He's a (laughs) funny guy. But anyway, uh, what did you think of this, Melody? Did you do you enjoy the story of the Miracle Man? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of nostalgia for me, for sure. I don't know how many times I saw that video, but I I could I could have definitely quoted a a good bit of it. I, I wonder how much I could quote now. I might have to go watch this uh, this video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but, I was just uh, flipping through it, and uh, I saw the part where she has the chart, and she's having him blink to uh-huh. spell out different letters and things. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember this scene. <laughs> yeah. I, I I always loved it when he got the orange Julius. <laughs> he mm-hmm. was so, mm-hmm. so excited to be able to get that. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it was really good. And I think, I mean, it definitely that movie pictures this idea that dad's teaching about, about essentially visualizing inside living the dream, living the goal. And that was very formative for me. Um, and I think, you know, I don't always visualize that way, but there are times that I do. And I know it's because, you know, I was able to, to see it, um, in this movie when I was a kid. So it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I've got some questions that we can, we can delve into here that I think just kind of facilitate the discussion of, of this point, because he doesn't really go in depth into the point. He really just uses the illustration of the Miracle Man to explain the point. So in terms of question number one, I'm I'm curious, is there a way that we can improve this ability to visualize inside the dream? I know a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm not I'm not a visualizer. I, I can't really see stuff in my head. I just I've got facts and figures and that's how I come up with my goals in life. I don't I don't have this like dream vision. Hmm. Is there a way that we can develop that sense? Yeah, I think there are definitely ways. I mean, I think the first thing is to not think that it's stupid. <laughs> like, I think a lot of us like hear that and we're like, wait, wait, that's kind of weird. I don't want to visualize anything. Like, I think the first piece is just realizing, no, there's a really powerful and formative piece of our brain that is affected by what we visualize. And so I think the first piece is just like choosing to see that it is important. Um, I also think that, you know, sometimes it's hard to visualize out of thin air. Um, you know, it just in our mind's eye. So I think that, you know, dad used to talk about putting pictures on the mirror and I mean, when they, when they were looking to build the house that mom now currently lives in, um, they had the picture of this actual house on her mirror and ended up buying the actual house from the magazine rather than building one that was like it. So I think, you know, we certainly saw the power of visualization that way, but it wasn't just that she was imagining a house with columns in her mind. She was looking at a house with columns each day, Um, on her mirror. And so even though that's not necessarily, you know, picturing her opening the door of the house or whatever, it is helping her mind to get into that visualizing mode so that she can do it from inside the dream. So I think visual aids, actual 
physical, tangible objects um, are super helpful. And then I also think there are times when we can um, kind of go to a certain place and visualize in that place. So, for example, you know, if it's a, a weight loss goal that we're working on, maybe we go to the store that has the pants we want to buy when we get to the goal and like visualize trying on the pants in that store so that we're we're attached to some physical place or, um, you know, there's some there's some places that I love to run. Um, and when I had to stop running for a while, it helped me just to even walk in those places and visualize running there again, because when you're in the place, it's kind of easier to imagine the goal being lived out. So I think those are a few ways. I'm sure, I'm sure there are more ways, but those are the first that come to mind. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that's a great response. I, um, I'm always entertained with this uh, story of the miracle man, not just because of his ability to illustrate goal setting in such a powerful way, but also illustrate just the power of the human brain um, that when put to the test that he could literally retrain parts of his brain to figure out, okay, how, how can I move these muscles mm -hmm. to, to make my lungs work? How can I, adjust how I'm able to move my body so that I can start to retrain how I can walk. And we see that, you know, time and time again now with, with people with different medical conditions. Uh, but I'm always just so amazed at the power and flexibility of the human brain. Yeah. Uh, and it just makes me think, okay, if I can relearn or if someone can relearn how to walk or how to breathe or how to speak, of course we can relearn how to feel or how yep. to think. Um, so we don't have to feel limited by, well, I'm not a dreamer. I can't, my brain doesn't work like that. No, I think, I think you just need to, you just need to apply yourself, man. Like yep. your brain is more powerful than you realize. For sure. All right. So, uh, question number two, then it goes into some of these questions that he asks at the end about, are we ready? Are we really conceiving how this is going to affect us when we're in the dream? Can we see these things happening and are we ready for them? And so the, the question I wrote is, can we anticipate all the fallout of accomplishing the dream that we that we have or the goals that we've set? And how can we be ready? How can we get into that ready mentality? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, you know, when I was a kid and I would hear dad teach about goal setting and he would talk about stuff like this, like people are more afraid of success than they are of failure. And there's, you know, the cost to success and there's, you know, fallout that happens with accomplishment. And I would just be like, what? Like, what do you mean <laughs> people are more afraid of success? That doesn't sound right. And the older I get, the more I realize how right he was. And I I honestly think that is probably what stops most of us, um, at least in our adult years of working towards goals, because we're aware enough of the world to be able to count the costs and to be able to know that everything is a trade off. Everything has a trade off. And so the sacrifices we make to accomplish something will result in a fallout in another area of our life. And it might be a great fallout, <laughs> you know, like it might be, maybe we have to give up playing video games so that we can build our business, or maybe we have to give up sugar so that we can drop a few pounds or whatever it is. Like it, it might be great for us in every way, but it might still be hard. There's still a cost. And so, um, and I also think, you know, the, the experience of success does bring with it higher degrees of responsibility, certainly in our work fields. You know, if we are getting the promotions that we're working towards, then it means we're working longer hours. We have more responsibility. We are taking care of more people. We're leading more people. We have to have different skills and all of this, all of this stuff that can really quickly as an adult start to seem overwhelming. So I think that in order to not get overwhelmed with it and in order to make the best choices about what we're pursuing, I think just being real honest about that stuff from the beginning can help us anticipate it and welcome those changes that come along with success and growth. So 
you know, as we're making our goals and then making our plans to accomplish those goals, I think it's always good to kind of do that SWOT analysis of the strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats in every situation. Uh, I think it's always good to count the cost and say, okay, if I'm going to put in these 10 hours a week to achieve this goal, what am I putting down in order to be able to do that? Um, Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a super important piece of, of delighting in our work when we get there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I, I love that response. And I think that my third question, I think falls right in line with that answer, but I'll ask it anyway, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is what do we do if after we've done the SWOT analysis, we've looked at this outcome, this fallout of accomplishment, we say to ourselves, well, I'm, I'm not ready for that yet. Where do we go from there? How do we, how do we get Mm -hmm. to a place where we could be? Do we just have to give up on that dream? Do we put it to the side? What do we do? Once we've decided, oh, I don't think I'm ready for that. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that there's a couple ways we could go. I think we could either do an incremental step towards it. So if we say, all right, I'm not ready to put 10 hours a week into this, but I am willing to put two. So what could I accomplish with two hours a week? And then that's the goal. And that could be um, the next right step, you know, and then after that, maybe we're ready for more. The other thing we could do is if we're not ready for the changes that the accomplishment would bring, um, it would be to grow ourselves in a different way so that we can become ready. So if we're not ready to, um, I I I keep trying to think of goal examples, but we're not ready to pursue a certain, um, promotion because we are afraid that we don't have the leadership skills um, to do a good job with it. Let's just say then instead of just saying, well, I'll just never get that promotion. It's just not for me. We could say, I'm going to pick five leadership books to read this year and I'm going to discuss them with um, my friends or my coach. And I'm going to prepare myself so that I am ready for the changes that the accomplishment will bring. So I think, you know, those are two different ways we could go about it, either an incremental approach or a self growth approach. Mm -hmm. I love that answer too. I think um, one of the examples that a dad does bring up in this lesson is how he uh, visualized camp and Mm -hmm. how that was something that he anticipated as much as he could about what it was going to be like, what the buildings were going to look like, how they were going to make that happen. And I think he tried to anticipate as much of what that dream realized would be. And I think, you know, he would even say like, well, he probably didn't catch everything, but he knew he was ready for the bulk of it. He knew he was ready for kids to be at his house and he knew what facilities he needed to make it happen to make that dream come alive. Yep. So I I think those are great responses. I, I love this teaching i love how it's it's so uh, iconically circle a if you guys enjoyed listening to it you want more info on morris goodman we'll have links in the show notes about him and his story but before we go this week melody do you have any final closing thoughts for us on this on this lesson i mean i think what i'm taking away from this lesson is uh an invitation to courage Um, When I think of the story of Morris Goodman, um, the courage that he displayed, the tenacity, the grit, the just unwillingness to give up um, is really inspiring. And so I think that when I look at my own life and my own goals and my own fears that are certainly less founded than his were, I think it invites me to courage. And so that's my invitation for all of us as we head into the next week. Awesome. Well, thank you, Melody. And thank all of you, our audience, for sticking with us. If you're still listening now, really an extra special thank you for listening all the way through to the end of the episode. We really appreciate it. So Thank you for joining us on this journey with the Reflections cast. And remember that your support, it really means everything to us. So if you enjoyed the podcast, don't forget to hit that like button. Maybe write us a review, maybe a comment. 
hey, even leave us a voicemail. And please share this episode with friends, family, or anyone you think might benefit from our discussion. We believe in you, and we are committed to helping you thrive on your journey of discovering all you were created to be. Until next time, keep reflecting, keep growing, and pass it on. <laughs>